Let's take a look at the 6200 series IPPBX appliance. This is the same software on the 6100 and the 6200 as well as the 6510. Um, on all three of them, they, they function and operate the same. They are programmed the same. The hardware, however, is slightly different. Let's take a look at the physical piece of hardware that goes with the 6202 appliance. Now, the last number of your appliance, 620204, tells you how many of the FXO ports are on the appliance. FXO ports, these are the ports that go out to your provider. So if you were gonna bring an analog line in, you'd plug it into an FXO port. The FXS ports are the ones you connect to a station or a device. So like a telephone, a fax machine. Um, and all appliances, no matter what, only have two ports. So if we had a 6204, it would have two FXS ports and four FXO ports. The WAN and the LAN port, just what you'd think. The WAN would typically connect to an outside connection, um, get a static IP address. The uh, unit itself can act as a router and so it can hand out DHCP, all that kind of stuff, out through the LAN port, which would connect to your network. If you already had a router in place, you would just use your LAN port and, uh, and program all your DHCP and all that through your router. If you're going to use both ports, um, they don't have to be WAN and LAN. Some of the units actually now say LAN 1 and LAN 2 because you can make that second port to be a WAN port, to be another LAN port, and, and you can use it in any way you see fit. The LAN port is the one that will have PoE in the end. When you first set it up, um, you have to log in through the WAN port typically, and then program your LAN port to what you want to be, and then reboot it. The, uh, the front interface will help you set the DHCP mode or static mode for your port any way you want, as well as do a factory reset. Um, the functionality of this screen is pretty limited, but it gets the basic pieces done if you need to access your, your system. You have lights for connectivity on your LAN port, your WAN port, USB and SD ports, your FXS ports, which is for phones or faxes, and your FXO ports, which are your telco lines. The SD card is in the back. We put one in every unit. Um, it's important that you use an SD card or a USB so that you can save recordings or do backups regularly. Um, if you want to do uh, automatic backups, you either need a um, FTP server to send things to or a card in here to hold all of that data. The uh, USB port will support um, huge hard drives. Um, I've put a, a couple terabyte one on these before and it works just fine. It does have the power port as well, um, but if you're using PoE, you don't necessarily need that. The reset button here on the back will do a factory reset for you if you ever need it, but it, uh, it's uh, important that you, uh, you make note of all of the ventilation on here. This thing will overheat if you, uh, if you do not keep it clear of other hot devices. So I have set them on other switches before and it works just fine as long as there's nothing stacked on top of it. If you start stacking things on top of here, you will overheat the unit. So it's important you don't do that. It is wall mountable, so you can see all that on, on here for those ports. Um, it does take a 12 volt, 1.5 amp power adapter, and uh, it's pretty universal as far as that is concerned as long as you, uh, you meet the power requirements listed on the back. And that is the 6200 series IPPBX by Grandstream.